Good afternoon. I'm Dara Bunjan. I'm the food enthusiast. If you're first time coming into the food enthusiast here at Jaymore Living, I am a food writer, food stylist, PR maven, and a frustrated baker. Please feel free to send in any questions uh, to me or to our guest today. You'll see me look to the side from time to time, checking to see if there are any comments or questions. That comes on the computer. The show is done through the phone, henceforth why I sort of look to the left. Before I bring in my guest today, um, for those of you here in Baltimore, Baltimore City, the new mayor has done a lockdown on the restaurants and we can no longer eat in the restaurants nor al fresco with the restaurants, but you can support them, support all the independents. You can go get uh, carry out. They are doing Christmas boxes or holiday boxes of food. They are doing gift baskets and shipping that out. Uh, please, please support. We need to support the restaurants and their employees. And another way of doing this is to sign the petition, the petition called, you go to the website, saverestaurants.com, sign the petition that Congress must pass the Restaurant Act to protect the livelihoods, and reignite our national and local economies. Support the Independent Restaurant Coalition. That website will be floating up. Uh, now let me bring in today's guest, who is Adam Borden, a 20-year food industry veteran. His CV is amazing when you look at it. Uh, he was on the James Beard Foundation Program Committee, Marketing and E-Commerce manager for Petrosian Products, founder and partner of Bradmore Foods, which is a national recognized food entrepreneurship, brand management at McCormick and the Hershey Company, most recently Sage Dining, a kindergarten to 12th grade independent school food service, but unfortunately that's down due to COVID. But why we have Adam here today is he is president of Marylanders for Better Beer and Wine Laws, Advocating More Modern Alcohol Laws. Good afternoon, Adam. Hi, Dara. Thanks for having me. Well, it's my pleasure to have you here. We've known each other for quite some time, and you've been really quite entrenched in bettering the antiquated laws that Maryland has for beer and wine. How did Marylanders for Better Beer and Wine Laws get started? And um, what have you accomplished? I know that you've done a number of things, but what has the organization mm -hmm. accomplished in, since 2005, I think you started? That's right, that's right. So, uh, it, was actually, uh, it was actually started by a fellow who, who liked to visit a lot of the wine festivals. And he was very frustrated that the wine, fest wine festivals, he would have found some wines that were of interest to him by Maryland producers, but he didn't have any of it shipped to him and just paid in any wine clubs, wine clubs. So he and a group of friends got together and they started this organization. Um, and then in, and then in 2008, or 2008 or so, he got a job out of it. Um, um, and I happened to be on this because I, I had grown up in Baltimore and then returned and uh, I'm also a wine drinker. A wine drinker was similarly frustrated. frustrated. Uh, um, and so I ended up from Silver from Scott in in 2008, and um, proceeded to work collaboratively with a lot of the in-state wineries and like wineries and other out of state, other out of state wineries. Uh, a lot of the enlightened retailers and was was able to, was able to successfully pass the bill in 2011 that allowed, allowed for consumers to get wine, get wine delivered directly to your door. Um, um, and then along, along the way, also had uh, a lot of a lot of uh, fine dining restaurants. Thanks a lot to supporting to support the independent restaurant restaurant uh, restaurants who are hurting in London elsewhere and elsewhere. Uh, and a number of they they offered the opportunity of what's called corkage. Usually, usually for a special occasion like a birthday or an anniversary, you'd want to take a special bottle of restaurant restaurant. 
they would agree to open it for you. If you agreed to pay a to pay a fee, every merry way, merry way. Excellent. If Excellent. if in recent restaurant allowed that, in theory, they could lose their liquor license. They value they value them. Um, um, we worked Adam, with, we worked with the restaurants. Did you? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Adam, we're having that same problem we had before we went on air. It's sort of like certain areas are repeating yourself. So um, what I'm going to suggest. What I'm going to suggest. Is this any better? Um, um, you should turn the sound off on your phone. You should turn the phone. sound off on your phone. So, Jen, so, if you can take Jen, me out for a moment and let them moment. turn off. Turn off the sound on your phone, Adam. And that's why we're probably having the problem. You don't want it. the phone. To, the sound should be down uh, for your media and for your telephone. It all should be turned off. Um, Does this and, work better? Well, no. I'm I'm getting the uh, feedback. You You're need to turn hurt. off turn off the sound on your phone. Yeah, you know, just uh, like I, for I, media, turn off the media. And Jen, can you bring me in alone? And Adam, okay, thanks, Jen. And if Adam's listening, he needs to turn off any calls, media, sounds, vibrations on your phone and go out of the system and come back in and Jen will bring you in and we'll give that another shot. So um, let me tell people a little bit more about um, founders for better beer and wine laws and what they have accomplished. Um, back in 2005, the organization started and it used to be that you uh, could not ship wines from the local wineries here in Maryland, and you could not bring in your own bottle of wine into a restaurant. And over the years, um, as they call it, which is MBBWL, or Mounders for Better Wine Laws, um, they've been able to set up legislation. They have 10,000 people, part of the organization from consumers to uh, producers and things of that nature. Uh, Adam had told me a story um, at one time. Many of you know the name Robert Parker from The Wine Advocate. And there we are. Let's give it a try now and see better? how it's work. It sounds better, Adam. Okay. That's good. Okay. We're good. All right, so I was just going to tell the story about Robert Parker and um, what happened when he went into a very fine dining restaurant for a very special meal. Maybe you can pick up on that. Yeah, he uh, in the wine and in the wine advocate before he left, uh, he would frequently go out to nice meals, and oftentimes he would bring his own wine. Sometimes he would buy from the list, but often he would bring his own. And he ended up doing that at a restaurant in Maryland where um, he had a great meal and bought, bought, brought a bunch of 82 Bordeaux and then uh, wrote it up in his uh, newsletter and sent it out. Um, and the liquor inspector in the county got a copy of it and brought it into the restaurant and said, do you have any of this 82 Bordeaux on your wine list? And the restaurant said, no, I haven't been around that long. So Richter said, Richter said, well, you violated this corkage law. If you allow, if you allow this to happen again, you're going to lose your liquor license. And so that's what led to wanting to legalize, legalize corkage in Maryland. I think we're starting to have the same problem again. I don't know why, but let's try to power forward hmm. and um, get some of the immediate things done. What is on the agenda for Maryland um, Marylanders for better beer and wine laws. What are you working on now? It's a key issue, key issue that that we're. Let me see. Let me see. Is this any better? Is this any better? It could be. It let's, well, let's. Um, yeah, I was going to say the key issue for us is, is uh, be, uh, being able to legalize going into a chain store like a grocery store or or a club a club store and buy beer and wine. Beer and wine. 
now I'm getting the reverb back. Um, well, um, let me try to express to people. Um, I got a note from Amy Ginsburg, and this has to do with what you're doing right now, is the frustration of going in when you're out of town, you're in Florida, or she's in Florida, and she can go into the supermarkets and get wine there, or she's in Boston, and she can go into Costco and the big box stores and get wine. But we are limited here in Maryland, specifically that there's only so many liquor licenses. So let's see if you can uh, go forward with that and we don't get too much feedback here. Okay, okay. Um, I did turn off the rest of the, so it's just on, it was just on, on airplane mode except for the Wi-Fi. It, it, hopefully it you won't don't need Wi-Fi for this. Okay. Um, so so the, the short answer is that Maryland used to allow grocery stores to get less. Um, up until 98, 98 each grocery, ch grocery chain could get one county. And then, and then in the dark of night, the culture ch changed the law and made, and made it so in Maryland now, there are about, there are about tours, tours that are grandfathered in, and the chain get any more. Get any more. Um, is, it a, is it a fairly unusual place? There are only th two other states that beer in, that beer in tours, and, and nine other states that prohibit wine tours. Um, um, respect, respect, ninety-eight percent of percent of can go to the, can go to the grocery store and buy beer. Um, in the, clearly in the minority. So. Um... The liquor laws, I mean, Maryland is very antiquated. You had said something about, you know, most states have a liquor board. And Maryland has 43 liquor boards? Uh, not so many, not so many, not so many. We have uh, 24 counties, and there are actually 25 boards because the city of Annapolis has its separate from Anthony County. Um, but most other most other states liquor licenses for liquor stores are issued by the state, and then the local jurisdiction can weigh in. Can weigh in. We don't want to a school school. We don't want to church. We only want, we only want any any, whatever the concerns are from the community. Um, in Maryland, that county county level, and so each county has different restrictions. So for example, Baltimore Baltimore County and Garrett County in Western Maryland. They prohibit Sunday sales, but in the but in the other twenty two counties, liquor can be sold on Sunday, um, um, and that's just because the county hasn't changed the law. So there's um, a there's a wide variety of those types of rules. Types of rules. I think you know we had talked in the catering or charity events. I was involved with big events that people you know, different restaurants share our strength, Taste of the Nation, which is now No Kid Hungry. And mm -hmm. we would do mm -hmm. these events and the wine distributors could not give free wine. And in effect, the distributors had to charge the charity for the wine. And then they would make a donation to the charity in the amount of the cost of the wine. It right. was so ludicrous, but these were the things that we had to go through. The fact that you couldn't bring in your own bottle of wine, the, um, you couldn't take any of it home at home. That was frequently right. one of the complaints as well. We we've been involved in auctions, auctions, and you're supposed to get a charity auction license if you ask at that basket that has wine in it and you're auctioning it off. You're supposed to apply for a charity auction license. Yeah. Um, um, one of the things that, that made Maryland a little unusual is uh, there used to be a system where, where if, if you bought more of a particular product, you couldn't get a discount. So whether you bought a case as a retail store, retail store, or you bought a hundred cases, it didn't matter. You had to, had to pay the same price, the same price. And it and it used to be that the distributors could only change price once a month. They had to post a price publicly in a trade journal, 
And that was available to everyone. Available to everyone. They couldn't, tr couldn't, they couldn't change it the next time the journal was, the journal was printed. Fortunately, that has changed. There are a lot of crazy laws like, laws like that. Um, yeah. liquor, say the liquor, you know, the, the prohibition on chain stores is one of those. Um, um, you know, there's sort of, there's sort of three that Maryland, that Maryland chain stores from getting licensing licenses. One is it said, you can't you chain store, chain store, a supermarket or a discount house. I don't know what a dis know what a discount house is. I know what a, a says says. Not sure, not sure they define it, define a chain store the same way. And none of those define, find. So, so, and if you think about a supermarket, right, an Aldi or a Lidl, are very trader, trader Joe's are very different from a Costco or a giant or a Safeway. Would all of those qualify as supermarket? They're, they're, they're just very different. Um, the second is that you have to be a Maryland resident. So uh, you, you can't be on a liquor license in Maryland if you're a Maryland resident. resident. And then the third is it, it's limited to one and it, it can't be issued to a company. It has to be an individual on the license. So those are the three basic legs of this that prohibit prohibit the chains from getting more licenses. Well, some might um, say, "Well, what's that going to do to the local liquor stores? If you mm -hmm. can go to Giant or Costco and buy and um, and there is some great thought behind that." If uh, you know, we're still getting a little bit of the reverb back, but we're managing right now. Um, what are the benefits to the local liquor stores when this goes into place? Well, so I guess, so I get a couple ways of that. Couple ways of that. One, if you've been to other states, the vast which, which allow stores to stores to sell, there are very different retail communities, California. Where can you buy a bottle of wine? Or a six pack of beer. You can go. To, you can go to the club store, the supermarket, the convenience store, bodega. bodega. They're all selling. They all, ex they all exist. So it, it, it's for me to believe. For me to believe that Maryland is such a special place that by allowing the chains to sell, all the retail community is community disappear, disappeared. Hasn't in these other states. In the case of in the case of Oklahoma. Oklahoma uh, Allow, allowed chain stores to start selling beer in, in 2018. In the same year, we issued 16, 1,600 wine, wine licenses and 3,000 license, beer licenses. One store, store closed. Okay. Seems, that seems like, you know, a, a, lot, a lot of licenses to issue relative to close. So, close. so, so I, I don't, I, I don't want to say that there isn't impact. There, there will. Is it an is it normal? Normal? Yeah, it'll be a new normal. Um, yeah. In terms of you know, in terms of how the local stores will compete, are are in Maryland fifty to seventy to seventy five great independent stores, right? You know them, I know them. They have great service. They have really interesting selections. They're you know supporting you know supporting the local producer, and they've got obscure vintages. Of whatever it may be, you know, or or you know, interesting. They might do growlers. They might, you know, they might they might have different tasting. If for them, if for they're going to do well. Going to do well, right? They have a long loyal following, and they will continue. For the the, the liquor stores that compete, um, think that they're going to be able to, they're going to be able to compete on price as well as they used to, because the chains are probably lower probably lower price, and so and so they're going to have to diversify. What they offer, so I think that's the outcome. Outcome. Okay. Before I forget, uh, for those of you, uh, for further information to be part of this process, the website are the initials of the organization for Marylanders for Better Beer and Wine Laws. It's mbbwl.org. You can go there, sign up, get the newsletter, see what's going on. Um, you know, I'm, I'm curious right now, because of COVID, the restaurants mm -hmm. are doing cocktails to go and beer to go. Mm -hmm. I think, and mm -hmm. that 
really goes against if they didn't have a resale license, but a lot of them don't have the resale license yet, they're able to sell. Any right. thoughts on that? Well, and well, and so the governor, the governor has issued an order where, where also the local producers of her, of her, um, which they weren't able to do, weren't able to do, um, um, and the the retail stores can deliver. Um, in some in some counties, they weren't able to do that too. So you've some some very different rules during the pan during the pandemic. And, and um, I think the restaurant, the restaurant industry, and and the local producer community are very interested in those because those become permanent law. Well, I know that what you're hoping to get that into legislation by December 31st. Unfortunately, we're still having that reverb. And um, what I'd like to do is maybe come back to you after the first of the year, and we can see where we are on this law, you know, did it get passed or what's being adapted? But I know, uh, you know, uh, when I travel out of state, um, you know, Pennsylvania has the liquor board. So the liquor was sold through the liquor board. Right. right. Uh, so, but can they sell it in the food stores in Pennsylvania? I'm not sure. Yeah, they've just started doing that. Oh, okay. But yeah, I know they, uh, they had a, a, a refer, you were referring to a contr what contr what's called a control state. So only state stores could sell out. And they, re they recently opened it up where groceries and, con and con convenience stores actually can, can buy licenses. Okay, okay. Um, so people, you know, I understood what he was saying, but there's a little bit of feedback it is mbbwl.org. Uh, check on the website and you can see what is going on and how what they're accomplishing. And, and a big thanks to mbbwl.org uh, for you know letting us expand what we're doing that we can now get corkage and bring in our own wine or take the wine out of the stores or um, just all that they have accomplished. And I'm just making sure my notes here. Um, if people want to get involved, go to the website and everything mm -hmm. will be there for you. Adam, indeed, sorry indeed. we had a bad connection here, but uh, let me wish you the best of the holiday season. And we'll reconnect after the first of the year and um, hopefully we'll have a better connection there. So hopefully thank so. you Happy so hot. much. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, everyone. Um, before I forget, I want to wish a happy Hanukkah to those celebrating. And since I'm really going to be on vacation till after the first of the year, the best, of the holiday season to everyone. And um, like anything else, we appreciate when you share the show with friends who would be interested in the subject matter and helping it to grow. And what you've done, it has been a year since I started the Food Enthusiast. I'm most grateful to Jay Moore Living for giving me this uh, platform to talk to some of my favorite food and beverage people, whether they be local, national, or international. It's been a great year and a great ride. Um, you can find the show up on Jay Moore Living's Facebook page immediately after, and uh, it will be up on jmoreliving.com and the YouTube channel a little later today. And... Um, if you need to reach me, you can reach me at food at jmoreliving.com. My social media is at Dara Cooks. And as always, we want you to stay safe. Uh, so wear your mask, be careful, and may your plates always, always remain full. And here's to a better year. Here's to hopefully a better 2021. See you next year.